Everyone's all talking about mindfulness this and meditation that, but does this stuff actually work? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about my first time meditating, so make sure that you stay tuned. What's up, everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And yeah, in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the first time I tried meditating, and I'm gonna explain how it can help you if you just give this thing a try. And don't worry, don't worry, I already know what you're thinking. Yeah, Chris, that's cool for you, but I can't stop my brain from thinking. Well, let me stop you right there because I actually already called this in a video, which is perfectly titled, Why You're Wrong About Meditation. It's linked right up there in the info card and you can check it out right after this video. Also, if you know somebody who is stressed, depressed, or has emotions that are all over the place, please do me a favor and share this video on social media so maybe they see it. All right, so let's get started. How did I even hear about mindfulness? So like, sometimes I don't like to admit it, but like I was a huge, huge fan of BuzzFeed. I don't really watch it, uh, check it out anymore. But anyways, so like I remember just seeing like articles one after another after another, just like how mindfulness can help you at work, how mindfulness can help you with your kids, how mindfulness can help you in your relationship, how mindfulness can help you in the bedroom. And I'm like, what the hell is this mindfulness thing people keep talking about? And like, I wanted to find out. So I was about to go on a business trip and this is before I actually started reading a few years ago. And I was like, you know what? If mindfulness can help with so many things, I wonder if it can help out with addiction and recovery. I work at a rehab, I teach other people about staying clean and sober. Let's see if they have something on that. So I go down to my local bookstore and boom, there it is. And I found this book called The Mindful Path to Addiction Recovery. And by the way, amazing, amazing book. If you are somebody in recovery, like go check this book out. I will link it in the description below. Um, again, if you're somebody in recovery, um, there is a, a program called Refuge Recovery. I also suggest you check that out, but I will do some more videos about that program. All right, so anyways, I'm on my business trip. I'm in California, I'm in my hotel room and I crack this book open. And the, the doctor who wrote this book, he actually knows a lot about addiction and he knows a lot about meditation. So I'm reading it and like, some of this stuff is starting to make sense, okay? Like he's relating it to a lot of the struggles that people uh, who are recovering addicts deal with and their triggers and things like that. And then he explains kind of how mindfulness can help with it. So as I'm reading the book, I get to a part where it's like, all right, let's try this thing. I'm like, all right, cool. So the first meditation I read in this book was a body scan meditation, all right? So <laughs> after reading all of these instructions, it was like two pages. And by the way, if you're gonna do a body scan meditation, do not read the meditation, just download a free app and do a body scan because <laughs> it was difficult. But that may actually be why what happened actually happened. So I lay down, I get comfy on my hotel bed and I, I close my eyes and I'm really trying to remember these instructions. And they were simple enough, like bring my attention down to my feet, notice my feet, bring that attention up to my ankles and my calves and my knees and then my thighs and up to my stomach and my back and my chest and my shoulders and down my arms and up to my head and like, when I, when I was done and I opened my eyes, I was like, what the heck? Like, it clicked. It just clicked for me. Like, the one thing, the one thing that I've been trying to do most of my life is to turn this thing off. It's one of the reasons why I got so deep into drugs and alcohol, because I thought that that was the only way to turn this thing off, right? And I just noticed that after I, I opened my eyes, after doing this body scan meditation, I was like, that entire time, I wasn't trapped in my head. And maybe because I was focusing so hard on the instructions, paying attention and trying to remember what the instructions told me to do, like, whatever it was, this thing was not controlling my life for even five minutes, and I'm like, I just saw the potential. I saw the potential and I got really excited. So as I continued to read this book, because um, it, it explained that there, there's a big difference between mindfulness and meditation, okay? I'll do some more videos on that too. But anyways, there was something called mindful walking. So as soon as I got to that part in the book, I'm like, all right, let's see what this is about. So I go downstairs of the hotel, I, I go outside and I just start walking. 
I just start walking slowly and paying attention. And I'm paying attention to how my feet feel on the ground, how my ankles are moving and pivoting, how my legs are moving. I start to notice what the weather feels like hitting against my skin. And once I was done, I came out of it again. I'm like, oh my God, like again, two for two, two for two. I wasn't stuck in this thing again. I'm like, all right, I'm sold. I am sold on this thing. Um, and I, I, might have, I might have had a different experience than a lot of people do, but the reason being is I was given instructions and it was explained to me. Um, so the biggest excuse I hear is I can't stop thinking. And none of it is about stopping your thoughts. It's just about bringing awareness to whatever you have awareness about, whether it's the way your body's moving or different sensations you have, or you're just bringing awareness to the fact that your brain's going a million miles a minute. That's all it is. And like, I just noticed this sense of calm and I'm like, I'm definitely gonna start trying this more and more often, right? So I got hyped up, I jumped right onto the mindfulness train and um, I was in California um, a few months later and I ran into like a second or third cousin, right? And we were just catching up. We hadn't seen each other since we were kids. She's asking me what I do. And I'm like, yeah, I work at a rehab center. And she tells me she works for this place called Mindful Schools up in the San Francisco area. And that's when we just started talking like crazy. I'm like, yo, I've been trying this mindfulness thing and it works. And she's like, right? And we get all excited and stuff. And she, she tells me what Mindful Schools is about and she, um, tells me about some courses that they teach and she got me into one of their courses. It's like an introduction to mindfulness course. I'm like, heck yeah, sign me up, right? But anyways, um, mindful schools, it's, it's, Something that a lot of schools are starting to do, you've probably seen um, articles pop up or little short videos on Facebook where they're talking about how they're replacing um, detention with meditation and things like that. So Mindful Schools is a company that teaches teachers how to teach meditation, right? But the first thing you have to do in order to teach meditation is to understand what mindfulness and meditation is all about. So I went through their introduction to mindfulness course and my favorite instructor, my favorite instructor on there was this guy named Matt. And like, whenever he would talk, whenever we would talk about his experience and how he found meditation, like I just clicked with that dude. Like a quote that I will never forget that this guy said was, when I was a kid, Nobody told me how intense these emotions would actually be. And I'm like, yes, yes. Like nobody gave me a warning. Nobody like, like when you come out of the womb and you're a child, like they're like, here's math, here's how to read, here's your colors. But nobody's like, yo, you're gonna get intense, intense feelings of sadness and fear and all these other things. Nobody told me that. So that's one of the reasons I find mindful schools like, extremely, extremely beneficial to, you know, the world, like teaching kids. Like I know that I would have developed a lot better had I been taught this at a child, as a child. Um, but, but yeah, so I just went through their, um, their course and like they, they knew how to appeal to a guy like me. They had a lot of, uh, scientific evidence behind it and a bunch of different studies and things like that. But anyways, then I went through some of their other courses and actually got a curriculum. And I've been teaching my son meditation since he was about six years old. And as a parent, let me tell you, like first and foremost, this is not a disciplinary tool and it's explained very thoroughly. And something that bums me out is I know some parents who I've explained mindfulness to and they, they're they starting to use it as kind of like a punishment for their kids. And that's the exact opposite what, of what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be proactive about meditation, okay? But anyways, um, I, I've seen these drastic changes in my son. And for any of you who are thinking about meditating, if you have kids, this is a great way to do it. A great way to do it because it keeps you accountable because you're trying to help them too. So me and my son will sit down and We'll just meditate for a few minutes. We have uh, little apps that we use, a ton of free ones out there. I'll link to another video about three of my favorite um, free meditation apps. Um, but anyways, like I, I meditate, I meditate for maybe five minutes at a time. And depending on how my day's going, because I'm always go, 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 go. Sometimes I do like three five minute sits. Sometimes I only do one. And I'll be honest with you, there's days when I can't do a more formal meditation, but the overall goal of mindfulness is, is not to do all these formal practices, but to have 
small instances of mindfulness more times throughout the day. So if I know that I'm not gonna have even five minutes to sit down and just formally meditate, I'll be driving and I'll just try to be very mindful while I'm driving, right? Or I'm having a conversation, I try to be very mindful in that conversation, you know what I'm saying? So like, I, I cannot stress this enough. Some of you have seen me mention mindfulness and meditation in my other videos and you've said that you can't do it or you ask me more about it and I really need to do more videos on it. So this is my first one. I just kind of wanted to share with you guys about my first experience meditating. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear from all of you. Have you tried it? What are the issues or struggles that you've run into? Because I can't stress enough, in order to do this practice, you need someone to teach you. The same way as if I just handed you a piano and you don't know how to play it, like you're not gonna be able to just figure it out on your own, most likely, unless you're like one of those like super ultra talented, born with musical skills type people. But anyways, put your questions down below so I, I know what to make future videos on, okay? But again, like I said, if you know anybody who is stressed, depressed, or has emotions that fly all over the place, share this video. Please share this video. We need to get more people to start meditating, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I'm always making videos just to help you out with your mental health. So click that little round subscribe button. And if you got a minute, check out some other videos on this channel right there. I linked to the video about why you're wrong about meditation. Check that one out next, all right? But thanks for watching. Be mindful, and I'll see you next time.